right, good afternoon, eighth graders. Um, not sure if it's really the afternoon when you're watching this video, but that's when most of us have class and it's afternoon here now. So um, our next unit that we're going to do is we're going to read a novel called Farewell to Manzanar. And you're gonna have a series of videos. I'm gonna read a lot of the book with you. I encourage you to um, read along with me. My hope is that the book will actually be delivered to you and that you'll be able to get your book out um, and follow along as I read it with you. My plan is to stop along the way, to talk about vocabulary words, to clear up any confusion as far as the historical content that might be in there, at least what I can share. Um, and I wanna go over today, just a little bit of an introduction into the book and some of the other lessons that you'll find on the flash drive or on Schoology. Uh, and I wanna kind of organize, it is listed on your weekly um, to-do list, uh, but I want to kind of show you the different things that if we were doing this in the classroom, the order that we might have done it in, and I've also taken a bunch of things out just because they, they're not going to work at home. But I'd like to do as much as we can with the book as possible. So the first thing that you have is the anticipation guide, and that looks like this. Um, and I would like you to complete that first. It just makes some statements and you need to put on there whether you agree or disagree. And then there is a spot for you to write your reason. If you're unable to print it off um, or if you're unable to download it to your computer, that would probably be the easiest way and then just to, to write on it. Um, if you're unable to do that, you can simply write your answers on paper. So this second thing that you have is a picture of this little Japanese boy. And I don't wanna talk about it too much because what I want you to do is spend some time looking at this picture carefully and figuring out what it is that you see in that picture and fill out the worksheet that goes along with it, which is the photo observation sheet, which looks like this. Um, on the left-hand side, it asks you for objective observations, and it tells you describe what you see in the photograph, the forms and structures, the arrangement of various elements. You're not putting any personal things here. These are things like, I saw a basket, I see a little boy, I see what looks like might be a soldier, but be as specific in their objective as far as what it is you see in the picture, important things that you notice. The other side is the subjective observations, describing your personal feelings and judgments that you're making based on the picture. I see this and it makes me think of, it makes me feel, uh, et cetera. Okay, so I'll stop sharing those. I forgot to tell you, I am not really outdoors. I'm kind of sad. I'm, it's beautiful out right now and I, my goal is to get out there as soon as I'm done with this video. Um, but I hope that you are spending some time getting outside, enjoying the weather. And my, my virtual background for you today is actually uh, from our camping trip to Stony Brook. And actually, if I move out of the way, there is me and my family. We are climbing up the stairs. So that's from about two years ago, uh, beautiful waterfalls in Stony Brook. Um, I'd like to show you the novel. I don't currently have a copy of my book at home, but what I have found, and I can borrow these books um, from the National Archive. I've been doing the same thing with the seventh grade, and this looks, if you, your book was delivered, I really hope it was, it looks just like this book uh, on the cover. Um, so we see the title is called Farewell to Manzanar. Our author is Jean Wakasuki Houston and James D. Houston. And I am gonna point out our author because um, she is our main character. And one of the previous years, we were about three quarters of the way through the book when somebody finally realized, wait a minute, the author's name is Jean, and the main character is also Jean. So as we look at our, our Japanese characters, this Jean Wakasuki, she is the main character. So this, this is a memoir, pretty much, of remembering her time um, in the, the internment camp. I almost said concentration camp because we just wrapped up all of our Holocaust uh, things. And I don't know how many of you know that, that during World War II, 
we had internment camps right here in the United States. They weren't quite like concentration camps. They were not, we were not killing anyone, certainly not intentionally, um, but it was the place where um, the Japanese were housed. I'm not saying it was a good part of our history and as we read you'll see a, a, a lot of that in there. Um, there was a lot of mistrust after the bombing of Pearl Harbor of the Japanese. Um, so we're going to kind of delve into some of those uh, prejudice and uh, racial issues that were going on in our country at that time. So let me just kind of we're going to look at the preview information that we see in here. I want to share with you right here. It gives us a chronology. It gives us the history behind um, the Japanese in the United States. So right now I'm reading um, Across Five Aprils, which is a Civil War book with the seventh grade. Um, we actually never did that last year because we, we chose to read that other book. Um, but the Civil War started in 1861 and then ended five years later. So when we see this first date on here, 1869, is when the first Japanese to settle on the US mainland, arrive at Gold Hill near Sacramento, California. This is just shortly after the Civil War had ended. Um, and just shortly after California really became a state. I'm not sure on the date on that, but um, it may even still be a territory. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, 1870, US Congress grants naturalization rights to free whites and people of African descent omitting mention of oriental races. So naturalization rights, um, and meaning uh, you know, that they're American citizens, that we can get um, citizenship to, to those um, people, but which is kind of surprising with the African descent, um, but no omitting means they do not mention the oriental races, meaning the Japanese or Chinese at all. So although they're starting to allow some, some rights here for the African Americans, they are not for those other, um, oops, I didn't, ah, that went quickly, sorry about that. Eight, 1886, the Japanese government lifts its ban on immigration, allowing its citizens for the first time to make permanent moves to other countries. So um, although the Japanese were arriving in our country, they weren't supposed to be coming. They weren't supposed to be leaving Japan. So in 1886, it was the first time that Japan, Japan was telling them that they could emigrate and leave and move to other countries. In 1911, we have the US Bureau of Immigration and Naturalization orders that declaration of intent to file for citizenship can only be received from whites, and from people of African descent, thus allowing courts to refuse naturalization to the Japanese, meaning they can't become citizens. Um, so uh, whites can be citizens. They are now allowing uh, African Americans to become citizens, um, but not the Japanese. 1913, alien land bill prevents Japanese aliens from owning land in California. So meaning they're from a different country, they're, they're not allowing any Japanese to own their own land. 1924, Congress passes an Immigration Act stating that no alien ineligible for citizenship shall be, shall be admitted to the U.S. This stops all immigration from Japan. So in 1924, they're no longer allowing any more Japanese in. 1941, December 7th, surprise attack on Pearl Harbor by the Japanese. I'm not sure if you've learned about that in social studies yet, but we talked about that also a little bit when we were studying World War II um, earlier as well, that that was the event that got the United States involved in World War II. 1942, on February 19th, President Roosevelt signs Executive Order 9066, giving the War Department authority to define military areas in the Western states and to exclude them from anyone who might threaten the war effort. 1942, March 25th, evacuate, or evacuees begin to arrive at Manzanar Camp in Owens Valley, California, the first of the permanent camps to open. So let's piece those two together. With, the executive order in California, he has set off military areas where they are going to um, put the Japanese pretty much um, and possibly other, other people as well. But the, and that Manzanar camp, which is where 
part of our story is going to take place as the first one, um, first permanent one. 1942 and August 12th, evacuation completed. 1,100 people of Japanese ancestry removed from the West Coast to 10 inland camps. So although some of those people could have been here all the way as early as the 1860s um, and living here, they are being rounded up and moved to these camps because they don't think that they can trust them. 1944, December 18th, U.S. Supreme Court rules that loyal citizens cannot be held in detention camps against their will the first major step toward the closing of the camps. 1945, August 14th, Jap Japan surrenders, ending World War II. In 1945, November 21st, is when Manzanar Camp officially closes. So notice there's a bit of a wait time in there, although a lot of them just didn't know where to go or what to do. And we'll read about that as well. 1952, in June, Congress passes Public Law 414, granting Japanese aliens the right to become naturalized U.S. citizens. So it's not until after World War II where they can become citizens. The next part that I really do want to take a look at here is the terms that are used in the book. We're going to see these three words quite a bit, and I think they're going to come up in our questions as well, and I want you to know where to look back for them. So hopefully you'll have your... your um, book that you can refer back to this EC, Nisi, and Sansi. Whoops. And I don't know that I'm 100% pronouncing those correctly. Those are my best American ways to guess at how those are pronounced. So the, the EC is the first generation. The EC were born in Japan. Most of them immigrated to the United States between 1890 and 1915. So that I, they're first ones here. Nisi, the second generation, the children of the EC, American citizens by birth. Almost all Nisi were born under the, the, or born before the Second World War. So technically they are American citizens because they were born here, even though their parents were not allowed to become citizens. They couldn't have those naturalization rights. But the Nisi that are born before World War II are considered to be American citizens because their, their parents were already here and they were born here, and yet they were still persecuted. And then we have the Sansi, uh, the third generation of Americans with Japanese ancestry, and most of them were born during or after the Second World War. So those are the three terms that we will see when they're referring to the different generations um, within the, the Japanese. So that concludes my introduction. Um, what I'd like you to do for the rest of today, as far as English homework, is to complete that anticipatory guide um, look at the, the picture and complete the, uh, your thoughts about it. What, what do you objectively see and what do you subjectively see and think? And I hope you have a great day. I will see you tomorrow when we start reading chapter one.